Hi, I'm Bill, Bill King, and this is my video review of The Holy Bluff by Charles Nolan. It's been said you can't judge a book by its cover. In this case, you can't judge a book by its title. My assumption, based on the title, was that The Holy Bluff was going to be a rebuff of religion, a sort of atheism for dummies. It is nothing of the sort. In fact, it supports the principle of religion. Christian religion anyway. The seeds of this book appear to have begun with Nolan reading The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker, a winner of the Pulitzer Prize in 1974, dealing with the question of why do humans exist? Nolan believes that that work, although a prize winner, did not get the wide range of attention it should have. The Holy Bluff advances the suggestion that no matter what we do or how we do it, we lose in the end, in the form of death, be that death at 10 years old or 100 years old. It's unavoidable. The fix is in. How we deal with all between birth and death is what matters. The knowledge to learn about something, and we do that by three combined things, observation, conclusion, and application of what we learned. That is true in science, we're picking the winner of a horse race down at the racetrack and to know the difference between right and wrong. Neither right or wrong has a clear example. Walking into a 7-Eleven, shooting and killing the night clerk is clearly wrong. But is shooting and killing someone breaking into your home at 3 a.m. also wrong? Or is it right because it's justifiable? These are the kinds of questions the book brings up. One of the questions brought up in the book is one I always thought about, and that is the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, we all know it was a horrible way to die, but when you factor in that Jesus knew after death he was to arise in three days to live again, does that change the nobleness of that death? There is a remarkable section where Nolan puts the creation of the earth as described in Genesis side by side with the scientific secular version of how the earth was created to show they're not that different. The book does a great job of showing how much our moral outlook is an extension of what came out of Christian beliefs, but those beliefs are not the only beliefs. One can be moral, caring, and treat others as we would like to be treated without the religious aspect. It works both ways. I recommend this work to believers, non-believers, and those sitting on the fence looking for the right moment to pick sides and join the eventual winner in life's debate and our ultimate demise.